at the baseball winter meetings, catching up with Orioles scouting director Gary Rasich. And Gary, uh, good to talk to you again. And I know uh, the 2016 draft got some uh, good reviews that had to make you feel good. Not that you're really worried about that, but some people outside of the Orioles seem to like the work you guys did. Well, thanks, Steve. It means a lot. And uh, you know, we, we thought it was a deep draft going in, and it turned out to be. And we're happy with where we were picking and the players that we selected. And uh, we, we, hopefully, we'll look back on this one as one of our best ones. I thought one thing that was very interesting, the top three picks, all pitchers, all from the Midwest. And I believe Dan Durst may have been the area scout for all three, correct me if I'm wrong, with Cody Sedlock, Keegan Aiken, and Matthias Dietz. Is that unusual to have the top three from one general area like that? It is. It's very unusual. It's a scout's trifecta, really. And um, he's, he, he's very excited, Dan is. And, and uh, you know, it just happened to work out that way. It wasn't something that we designed going into the draft, but that's the way the chips fell, and we're very happy with all three of them. You always think of college baseball, California, Florida, Texas, some hotbeds, but there are players all over now, and obviously you guys found some in a, in a region that maybe you don't find them to that quantity a lot. It's, it's not a region that's heavily scouted, but there are good players. I've always said, you know, good players are good no matter where they come from. So we, we try and cover all our bases, and you never know where good players are going to come from. Let's get Gary's take on those top picks, how they did this year, and maybe what they have to do, Gary, you think, uh, for next year as they keep progressing. Let's start at the top. Cody Sedlock, he did some nice things at Aberdeen. Oh, he did, but now he's got to prepare for his full, first full season. You know, he'll get a, a larger innings load on him as a starter, and uh, we'll see how he progresses through the levels. But hopefully he gets off to a good, healthy start, and uh, maybe we can move him rapidly if, if, uh, if he earns it. Yeah, as an advanced pitcher of college, a lot of innings under his belt, some real accomplishments. It seems like maybe he could go to Frederick and, and, and maybe move up. Well, I don't really know. That's up to Brian Graham and player development where they start him, but it wouldn't hurt him to start at Delmarva either. Uh, it, it's all a learning process, so every 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 level that he's, he pitches at is a learning curve. There's a learning curve, so it, it won't set him back at all if he has to start at Delmarva. Keegan Aiken did some very, very nice things at Aberdeen, the left-hander out of Western Michigan. What did you like? He's a left-hander that throws strikes. He has good command. He's fearless. And uh, you never know with left-handers. You know, we've, we've always said left-handers don't have to be as good as right-handed pitchers, but they do have to throw strikes. And uh, he's one of those guys, I think he could go into Fenway Park or into the Bronx in New York and hold those big hitting power, those, those big power teams hit, you know, hold them at bay. So um, we're excited about him. Um, I think a little more so because I, I took a personal liking to that one. Oh, how come? I just like I saw him three times and he pitched very well for me every time. <laughs> he wants you at every start next year. He, he's already got that planned out. Uh, how about uh, Matthias Dietz? Matthias is a big, strong power pitcher. You know, when he when he gets comfortable with his delivery and he and he gets a little better command of his stuff, he he could be a dominant type starter for us. So I mean, the the, the ceiling is very high on that one. So Gary, every uh, scouting director and area scout wants to get guys down in the draft. Uh, this year, after you get maybe past the first 10 rounds, did some guys jump out at you had they played or where you were able to pick them? Uh, Zach Muckenhern, a, a left-hander that we took in the 11th round, has a good arm. He has an idea how to pitch. Uh, Ruben Garcia at 14, Nick Jobst at 15. Those guys could become power pitchers in their own right. So we're very exciting, very excited as to what we got down in the draft as well as at the top. And last thing, has there been a trend uh, maybe for the Orioles, and I'm not sure about the industry, but give me your thoughts on drafting relief pitchers. I mean, we've seen Clevenger and guys like that that you've drafted who are kind of specifically relievers. Uh, are we seeing more of that in baseball now? Well, we don't necessarily go into the draft thinking that we're going to draft a reliever. That's always kind of a fallback plan. Even with Clevenger, you know, there were a few of us in the room that thought he could start. And now that he's developing a changeup, that's not out of the question still. So um, we, we try and stay away from high school relievers. But college relievers, if we believe they have the arsenal to start, we'll, we'll take a shot. Well, Gary, we appreciate you taking time, and we'll uh, see you around here in uh, National Harbor. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Gary Race, Orioles Scouting Director, with us here on MassInSports.com.